If you're like me, you know that rotoscoping or the art of cutting people out from the background is honestly the worst. But now with AI taking over the world, we have not one, but two rotoscoping tools in After Effects in the form of Rotobrush 3 and Mask Prompter. Both use AI to mask out your subjects, but use slightly different techniques to get the job done. But the question I have is, which one is better? Let's dive right in. So we have four shots we're going to look at today, each with various problems that each program is going to have to solve. This first shot of the skateboarder I thought might be a good one to start with. Now for those who don't know, Rotobrush 3 is in After Effects beta at the moment and it has been away training high in the mountains to improve its rotoscoping algorithm. Let's see how it goes. I grab the Rotobrush tool and begin drawing over the parts I want, including the skateboard. Let After Effects propagate the frames and see what we have. Looks pretty clean. Color me impressed. Now let's switch over to our challenger, Mask Prompter. Now for those who don't know, Mask Prompter is a paid plugin from AE Scripts, but the difference here is that you don't have to draw anything around your subject. You just simply point at what you want to roto out and Mask Prompter just figures it out. It also has a feature where you can just mask the thing you want to look at and the plugin will just figure out what you want to roto. In this case, this is exactly what I did. All right, the result is completely fine if you need to composite behind, but obviously as a clean mat, it doesn't work that well, but it's still very impressive nonetheless. But in this particular shot, I'm gonna award Rotobrush 3 because the lines are just a little bit smoother, but only by a fraction. All right, let's have a look at shot number two. We have this lovely lady running against the sun. We throw Rotobrush 3 at it and see what we get. Now this is interesting. Look at how it cut out the individual strands of hair at the back. That is very, very impressive. Rotobrush 2 certainly couldn't handle that and the general matter of the subject is really clean. The edges aren't chatty and are really quite natural. What makes this even more amazing is that I didn't have to use the refined edge hair tool to get this result. It just knew what to do with the hair. Now let's get this shot into Mask Prompter and see what we get. We select the subject and let Mask Prompter do its thing. Not bad, but uh, not great either. While the shape of the matte line is fine, it does flicker around the edges and falls apart around the hair strands, which is to be expected. Not as impressive this time. The win hands down goes to Rotobrush 3, just for this hair section alone. Just look at it. It's looking bleak for Mars Prompter, but can they pull it back from the brink and close the gap? We've got two more shots to go. Let's have a look. Hello. Hello, Nick. It's your famous musician friend, Ari Cool. Oh, hey, Harry, how goes the music business? Yeah, not bad, mate. I'm in a bit of a bind. My music label has pulled the funding for my music video, but they still want me to produce a lyric video. Otherwise, the label is going to drop me. You got time to make me one? Uh, when do you need it by? In an hour. In an hour? I'm sending you the track right now as we speak. But thanks, mate. You're a lifesaver. <sighs> Siri, find out a way to make a lyric video fast. I found this awesome plugin for Premiere called the Lyric Video Creator Kit. 60 animated presets, built-in effects, custom textures, dynamically sizing backgrounds, and so much more, all contained in one handy essential graphics template, so you can always find it. Well, what do I got to lose? So mate, how'd you go? I think you're gonna be pretty happy. Now, shot number three is a little trickier. The problem areas here would be the out of focus cup and the hair around the young lady. Now, from experience, I don't expect either of the software to do particularly well, but let's throw this in and see how we go. As expected, Rotobrush needed a little convincing to pick up the areas I wanted to pick up, particularly around a shirt. The pattern on the shirt seems to throw off the algorithm a lot. But after a lot of fiddling, I was able to actually get it to lock onto the whole body. I actually had to do this twice because I realized I just messed it up the first time. All right, this doesn't look too bad at all. The hair is where it falls apart and the coffee cup outline, especially when it goes out of focus, needs some work. But overall, it's passable. I wouldn't probably use this shot, but it's fine. Now let's head over to Mask Prompter and see how we go there. This was having heaps of trouble trying to figure out the subject and for some reason would not pick up the headphones using the direct selection method. I tried forcing it to pick up the headphones using the mask method, but even that yielded slightly weird results. 
Overall, not a great mat, and I don't know if I would count this as usable. Again, the win goes to, you guessed it, Roto Brush. And finally, shot four. Pretty simple shot, wanted to see how the algorithm handles fine hair and foreground elements. Roto Brush 3 needed a little convincing of where the foreground and subject elements started. But once I figured it out, it was just smooth sailing, baby. All right, we added some refined edge adjustments to the hair and well, it's rotoed, but it's sadly very chatty around parts of the hair and foreground element. I suppose in reality, you never have a shot like this, but it's a nice experiment to see where the limits of the algorithm can take you. It's not amazing, but it's decent. Again, if I comp something behind this, you'll probably never know. Into Mars Prompter. Finding the subject was easy. I fiddled around with the settings to see if I can improve the hair, but unfortunately, Mars Prompter doesn't have any settings to really improve the hairline, so it is what it is. Overall, the result was mixed. The hair is very cropped and unnatural, and some of the lines around the body are very, very chatty. Again, Rotobrush Brush wins this round, but barely. I, it's only barely, just because of the little hairs around it. You know what I'm saying. And the final tally gives Rotobrush Brush a 4 0 win over Mask Prompter. Now, all these shots were deliberately chosen to be very tricky, and in most cases, either of these programs will do more than an adequate job for what you need. But Rotobrush 3 seems to have a slight edge, particularly when it comes to hair. I mean, look at this thing. It is beautiful.